So no big changes over the last 24 hours in terms of the areas that Russia occupies in Ukraine, highlighted here, of course, in red. Though there was a fresh attack last night to the west, Lviv in particular, uh, and the airport there, the part of the airport which is used to repair military aircraft. And, Alex, that feels like it must have been a targeted attack. Was it? And, and how did they achieve it from so far from their own territory? It definitely feels like it was a targeted attack, um, most probably done with a cruise missile. Cruise missiles have a range of up to many thousands of kilometres, so it's perfectly plausible that an attack could have come from the Black Sea or from the Russian landmass itself. Cruise missiles are very specific in their targets, so it's unlikely that this was an accidental strike and more likely designed to hit critical national infrastructure and also a warning to the NATO allies that Russia can reach almost to the border of the NATO alliance. You, you mentioned uh, that NATO alliance and the word accidental in there. 45 miles from Lviv to Poland, where NATO troops, including British troops, uh, are to be stationed. Is, is there a chance of an accident happening there? Or is 45 miles far enough? There's always a chance of an accident, but it really does seem, particularly if it was a cruise missile, which can be targeted for a precise um, attack pot, like a window, um, that, that it, was, it was a sign to show the West what mm. Russia is capable of. Let's uh, move from the West to the East uh, and uh, the Donbass region in particular. We also learnt last night that Russia's trying to establish a no-fly zone in the Donbass uh, region, Alex. Is that easy for them to achieve with the equipment that they have? And is it necessary? Because they've occupied that region really since 2014. I think this is really a sort of propaganda move on the part of the Russians. It's a sign that they're looking to their audience, that they are being proactive because neither Ukraine nor Russia has full control of, Russia, of Ukraine airspace. And so, therefore, it isn't really a feasible move to suggest, but it will play very well back in the heartlands. If we look over the last couple of days uh, of this war, it seems now like Mariupol is the epicentre. Still, of course, in uh, Ukrainian hands uh, for now, despite very heavy shelling. Could it fall relatively soon? And if it did, would it change the narrative, Alex, of the Russian success so far, from one of strategic failure to one of strategic success? Mariupol is a city of some 400,000 people, so it is subject to, at the moment, indiscriminate bombardment. Um, so it could fall in the context that the city will be pulverised. We are, we are clearly seeing that the Russians are going beyond strategic targeting to just widespread destruction and devastation. Um, if it falls, it provides Russia with a clear route by land from the Russian mainland to the Crimean Peninsula and the strategic M17 road. Uh, but this will really, this is a tiny corner of a very big Ukraine. So I'm sure it would play very well in Moscow that this was a great victory. Uh, but for Ukraine, we must not forget that there is, there is a lot more country still in Ukrainian hands. What, what do you make here. about what's, what's happened here, Mayor Klitschko? Um. Uh, just an hour ago, a little bit more than an hour ago. <laughs> We don't know if maybe it's bomb or racket. Uh, we're not clear right now. It's an expert uh, gives clear information. Sitting here, the uh, huge uh, print from from uh, from uh, this racket. Uh, actually, what is crazy? It's front of them pre uh, school, and you see the damaged uh, preschool. Thanks God, it's nobody was in preschool and school. Six buildings uh, is damaged. Nobody can live in these buildings. Uh, we evacuate right now the people. Uh, but uh, one more, one more fact is the war against civilian. I don't see military people here. It's no military base. It's uh, just apartments. Apartments from civilian. Uh, a lot of attacks uh, against civilians. Uh, one, one more example. The Russian propaganda, Russian liar. Uh, what they explain about the, some special operation, especially against uh, Ukrainian military forces. 
this war against civilian, against Ukrainian population. If you look in Mariupol, if you look in Kharkiv, if you look in, in other cities, uh, Chernigiv right now, uh, where the civilian will be destroyed, the city will be destroyed, I expect the Russians do it exactly the same way in, in the Kiev. Mayor Klitschko, like how far do you too? think this will impact the spirit of the Kiev residents, the Ukrainian people, uh, these constant attacks against civilians? The spirit, <clears throat> please talk to the people, the spirit uh, and the will to fight, to give the answer. Uh, if Russians think the uh, people will be... Uh, uh, will be disappoint, uh, if will be, people will be impressed and depressive, it's not. People want to fight. And every day the civilian asks me, please, Mayor, we need the weapons, we're ready to defend our families, our houses and our city. Do you think there's any mistake? This could have been a mistake or was this deliberately targeting civilians? Uh, okay, if we're talking about mistake, here's mistake. Last uh, morning was a mistake, 24 hours ago, two days ago was a mistake, huge mistake, destroyed the Kharkiv and Mariupol. How many mistakes they do it? How many civilians have to kill? And after that to explain about mistake uh, from, from Russian forces. Ukrainian air defense downs 14 enemy air targets in past 24 hours. Over the past day, the Ukrainian Air Defense Forces have destroyed 14 enemy targets. The Air Force Command issued the relevant report via Facebook, Ukrainform reports. Ukrainian fighter jets fought several aerial battles, in which they hit two air targets, a fighter jet and an attack aircraft. Bombers and assault aircraft of the Ukrainian Air Force inflicted heavy blows on enemies' armored convoys and vehicles providing support to the Russian invading troops. Anti-aircraft missile forces report the destruction of five more Russian aircraft, the types of which are being verified. The air defenses also destroyed three Russian drones, three cruise missiles, and an enemy helicopter. So on March 17, the air defense forces of Ukraine destroyed a total of at least 14 air targets, seven aircraft, a helicopter, three unmanned aerial vehicles, and three cruise missiles. As Ukraineform reported earlier, from February 24 to March 17, Russian invaders lost about 14,000 servicemen. Но любой народ, а тем более российский народ, всегда сможет от отличить истинных патриотов. I'm sending this message through various different channels to reach my dear Russian friends and the Russian soldiers serving in Ukraine. Ever since I was 14 years old, I've had nothing but affections and respect for the people of Russia. That is why I hope that you will let me tell you the truth about the war in Ukraine and what is happening there. Denazify Ukraine? This is not true. Ukraine did not start this war. Those in power in the Kremlin started this war. Some of the soldiers were told they were going to fight Nazis. Some were told that the Ukrainian people would greet them like heroes. And some were told that they were simply going on exercise. None of this is true. Every bomb or every shell that falls is falling not on an enemy, but on a school or a hospital or a home. So I urge the Russian people and the Russian soldiers in Ukraine to understand the propaganda and the disinformation that you're being told. And to President Putin, I say, you started this war. You are leading this war. You can stop this war.
А ті уряди, які сьогодні напівкомуністичні і пропутінські, то виходьте на вулиці і демонструйте їм підтримку вашого народу України. Що ще вони зранку зробили для України? Що ще ви можете зробити, ви мене питаєте? В Іспанії, в Італії, в Греції дуже багато нерухомості. На даний момент все время. Estoy escuchando aviones. Oigo disparos cada cinco o diez minutos. El ruido de los combates no tiene fin. Ya han pasado varios días desde que comenzaron los bombardeos intensos donde yo estoy. Las fuerzas de Ucrania y Rusia están combatiendo, así que no es posible salir de casa. Este es mi quinto día de encierro. He visto con mis propios ojos a gente muerta en las calles. Cerca de mi casa hay una tienda. Yo estaba al lado cuando fue alcanzada por una granada. Fui a ver lo que había sucedido y vi cuatro cadáveres. Parecían haber sido abatidos por la metralla. Sus cuerpos no fueron recogidos hasta dos días más tarde. Tres o cuatro días después de que comenzara la guerra, la gente empezó a quedarse sin comida. Las tiendas estaban cerradas y la gente empezó a saquear las que habían sufrido daños por las bombas en busca de alimentos. Tres o cuatro días más tarde, la gente estaba tan hambrienta que empezó también a asaltar las tiendas que permanecían intactas. Nuestra ciudad ha desaparecido, ha dejado de existir, está devastada. Las tiendas han sido destrozadas por gente hambrienta y nuestros edificios han sido pulverizados. Mis amigos se dieron una vuelta y vieron cinco edificios de los que solo queda el sótano. Con el tiempo te vas acostumbrando a las explosiones, dejas de tener miedo. Cuando explota algo cerca, ya no corro asustado hacia el sótano, se normaliza. Lo que me estresa es no tener internet porque no puedo contactar con mis parientes o mi novia, quien está tratando de llegar a Alemania. Lo único que pienso es en cuándo podré salir de aquí y verla. Las explosiones y los disparos ya no me asustan tanto como perder el contacto con la gente a la que quiero.